Welcome to Meta Slayers. So today we're going to be talking about how to play big. <laughs> Gotta love it. I do want to take a second to uh, remind everybody: like, comment, share, subscribe. Right now we're at about two percent subscription rate. Hit the notification bell. It's pretty good. You all like the top three of Age of Sigmar, so we kind of knew what we we're talking about. It's a true story. You'll get to know us a little bit more here and there, but yeah, definitely the subs, the likes, it all it all helps us guide the content. So appreciate all the current or subscribers. Uh, but yeah, please, if it's your first time watching, we promise we're staying consistent. We've already proved it thus far. Yeah, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna definitely keep going. We will not be silenced. So big walk, as everybody probably knows there's three different ways to play orcs in Asia Sigmar. Orcs, orc war clans. But it's almost a little confusing because there's so much. It is, and it seems daunting at first, but it really isn't as long as you break it up into bite sizes. I'm a big fan of iron jaws in general. I love bone splitters. Right? But together... Chocolate and peanut butter. Big wog. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so why is big wog the choice for orc players in Sigmar, it's not because it's easy to play, because it's not. It is solely for the reason that you gain tactical flexibilities that you don't get from playing each individual mono faction. Right. Right? So at first glance, like I was saying, it seems overwhelming, but it really isn't. It just comes down to the table. Now, granted, both Jay and I are seasoned Nurgle players in 40k, but this is this video isn't about 40k. The tally is very familiar to players like us, where you gain army-wide bonuses, not just allegiance abilities, but army-wide bonuses as you rack up your big log points. Right, right. And they do a lot of heavy lifting for your army. If you are playing Iron Jaws on its own, you have a very reliable set of allegiance abilities that you can count on. Same thing with Bone Splitters. You gain the six up, feel no pain, army wide, just period, for being Bone Splitters. With Iron Jaws, pretty much the only thing you lose by going Big Wog is the daisy chaining possibility, and there is an opportunity cost, but the daisy chaining possibility of fight priorities in every single combat phase. That's true. Now, for the Bone Splitter side, you lose the allegiance abilities, which, like he said, you can pick up later with the Big Wog but you lose some of that monster hunting ability from monster hunters, and you also lose the sub-allegiances, which for me, that's a pretty, a big, pretty big deal. Now with Iron Jaws as they are, there are some fantastic unit choices, albeit there aren't a multitude of unit choices you can take, but there's specific units, i.e. Gore Gruntas, that <laughs> benefit so that benefit from a specific loadout, which are the Chapas. Right. Right? So you get an extra attack profile, uh, whereas with the Spears you get the two inch range, but on the Chapas you get the plus one bonus, or the plus one, plus one bonus to hit and wound on a charge only. Now, with such a, I mean, admittedly lower model count unit, are the, is the extra reach even worth it? Situational, and that's where it makes it sketchy. So yes, if you're running a squad of six Gorgrentas, you want to be able to position your base size to reach over, but at the expense of an extra attack profile. So going from three attacks to four, hitting on twos, wounding on twos, I mean, there's an obvious choice going on here. Right. Now, that two-inch reach would have been relevant in the last game that we played, where I had the flying unit. Oh, yeah. That was just out of range. Yeah, so I could have poked you from the cliff. You could have. Right. Easiest way to sum up the what am I losing question is that. It's pretty much it. I've tried to break every single possible factor of why I should run Iron Jaws versus Big Wog, or vice versa, uh, as you did on your end for the Bone Splitters. There's really not. There's just, there's too much opportunity and benefit that you can gain from running Big Wog, which is why Big Wog is the competitive choice for orcs in Age of Sigmar. I don't know. I'm going to disagree. I still think Bone Splitters on their own, I, I don't think they gain enough from going to Big Wog. But... <laughs> and we'll get to that as far as how they synergize. <laughs> <laughs> Diving right into what to do in the command phase of playing Big Wog. So now we know 
and we're going to pan over to this table because it's a lot to read. Again, it seems daunting at first, but it's really not once you read it, I don't know, like 500 times. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty straightforward. All right, so this is where it gets controversial. Most Big Wog players argue that you should run Gordrak in Big Wog because you get the flat six Big Wog points versus D6. That puts you on a four turn minimum to max out your points. Right. That can be massive, you know, because four, turn four is when you start looking at those end of the chart abilities going, hmm, I think even if I lost all my points, it's not a big deal. It's really not. The game's about over. And let's do some math here. What is the probability of rolling more than a three on a 1d6? 50-50. 50-50. Cool. So why Gordrak to me isn't the best choice, not to mention he's over 500 points, uh, but in Big Wog alone, it's not necessary. And I've play tested this several times to see if Gordrak was necessary in a Big Wog's list. That's Iron Jaws heavy. It's just not. When you're setting up in your command phase, let's assume that you got first turn, didn't get second turn. We'll cover, we'll cover those bases. But if you get first turn, you do have a slight advantage because you can strategically decide how long you want to hold back for and where you want to position so you can get everything off. Now, in Big Wog, there is a command ability that you can use for one CP where you pop it off and wherever your warlord is, uh, the bubble around him is where you start scoring points based off of the amount of models you have in said bubble. Sure. Easy to get. So it's easy to get to the primary core points of uh, 12 being the first bracket, uh, 16 if you get lucky, I guess. Uh, but then you get all these tallies as well for taking the profits, uh, as well as war chanters, and why leave home without three war chanters? Yeah, yeah, they're kind of like the... Uh, they kind of carry, let's well, be honest. They're kind of like war docs for the, the bone splitters. Minimum two, I wouldn't push higher than three, Right. but you want to take two. Right. Just all the time. And this is the beauty about Big Wog, where you can ally in, and ally is a strange term for this, but you can inject in bone splitters models and units into your army where you get body count. So our boys being very extremely elite at 100 points for five models, you can get Savage Boys, Arrow Boys, even Boar Boys. You can get so many more models and rack up your Big Wog points. So what about spell casting? There's some flexible spells that you can use, but what you should be doing in Big Wog is setting yourself up consistently. So it's okay if you don't get that spell off or uh, the Fist of Gork spell off in turn one. It's okay because you're setting yourself up. Turn one Big Wog, that is entirely the positioning element of your strategy. So yeah, spells, it's okay if you don't get anything off in the first turn. It's all right. If you're taking, if you choose to take a profit, you have two denies. You're okay, assuming you're going second and you're just trying to cast and deny. Uh, are you going to be within 24 inch range, maybe, to pop off some of the Prophet spells and dish out some tasty mortal wounds? Potentially. So Yeah, it depends on the mission. Right. Sometimes you're only 18 inches apart, so you might be able to just snap out a couple of mortal wounds for some ship damage. Oh yeah. And some mortal wounds? No. Potentially many mortal wounds. Because if you take the Prophet himself, within 24 inches, if you catch it off and if you get all your big log points, you can sacrifice D3 big walk points for plus two to cast. Now, one of my personal favorites is Mork's Bony Bits artifact. You get a plus one. Now you're doing plus three. Orcs don't even know how to cast spells, but plus three. Ah, uh, you <laughs> do not know the channel power of the law. <laughs> That's okay, though. So meaning on a 10 up, as you can see, on a 10 up casting, which really only need to roll seven on a dice, two dice, which equates mathematically to 50%. You're doing mortal wounds per model in an enemy unit on a four up. Four better. Beautiful. So that's pretty much all you're trying to bank on in your command phase. You want to set yourself up. You're going to score the points. You really don't need to rack up all the way. The most important thing for me, as far as when I play Big Wog, is getting, up the, getting the six up feel no pain and at least the plus one to hit. The pl if I get to 20 Big Wog points and I get the plus one to wound, 
okay, I might be able to set myself for an alpha strike. It's just not worth it. Alpha strikes really aren't worth it unless you have something to really seal the deal in that sense. Yeah, not in Sigmar. No. Too risky in Sigmar, right? But in Sigmar, when you're going back and forth for priority, there is no initiative other than the top of the turn gets to choose. Yeah. Uh, Plus double turns. I'm not worried about double turns. They don't affect the game. What do you do in your movement phase? Pretty much wash, rinse, and repeat what you were trying to do and what were you, what you were pre-planning, or alternatively, if you're reacting to your opponent's first turn, you want to get yourself into position. So come turn two, you want to continue your big walk points. You want to make sure that your bubbles stay in your bubbles. Now, if you do decide to run a mock Russia or Gordrak or whatever it might be, try not to separate yourself and split off. Which is weird, because when you think of the green tide, you know, the, the big horde, you think of a, a daisy-chained out wave of, of hoarded units. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case for this. You want to stay compact. You do. You got to score points. You got to score points. Warhammer is a game of points at the end of the day. Even a lot of points. Even a lot of points. So movement-wise, yes, you want to position yourself. So by the time turn one is ended, assuming you deploy properly, you should have uh, the bracket where if you get hit, you move d6 inches up the board. Free movement. Which is basically what you get in running through Iron Jaws. Sure. So you don't lose anything. Again. Not to mention the additional part, and I, I suppose this is part of command phase as well, uh, but it, I guess it counts as a move. But why you should consider taking certain battalions for Iron Jaws as well as warlord traits. For instance, brutish cunning. So, which grants you a free Mighty Destroyers from your general, uh, as well as the Iron Fist Battalion, which you choose a unit. Yeah, he, love, he loves Iron Fist Battalion, uh, where you pick a unit and one of the sergeants or the champions become a buffed up one with plus two wounds. Uh, they also can grant a free Mighty Destroyers. Now, why this is so important is you lose the Mighty Destroyers command ability because that is a pure Iron Jaws Command ability. Right. But this is a workaround, and now you get two. Just that's, because. That's pretty rad. Right. So, shooting. This is my favorite from orcs, because, oddly enough, orcs have shooting, and it's weird to think of. You always think of choppers and hacking and slashing and getting into close combat, but uh, Arrow Boys, surprisingly good. As soon as I came across their data sheet, I was underwhelmed at first. Right. And then I started read, or I continued to read. Right. Potentially three attacks, three missile attacks going out from each arrow boy. Now, I like to run them in squad of 30s. That's 90 shots. And their durability is only rivaled by the Stormcast Eternals uh, archers and, and shooters. Yeah. Which, that's, that's impressive. And also another reason why I like to run the Prophet in my big log list is because you can grant them plus one to hit. Sure. That's incredible. That's really good. <laughs> you know what else is fun to do for shooting? Mm. Taking gloom spike gets, you can fit a unit of 60 short bows oh. into your 400 point ally detachment. Juicy. That's pretty good. Uh, they're really good chaff. You just throw them out, make a big line, use their uh, little 12 inch bow to do whatever with, but uh, they're so cheap. Now you lose the benefit of, of the Gloom Spike gets themselves, kind of like how the big wall works. Mm. But it's still a really fun ally, and it can actually give you some little acupressor shots. Tiny needles. Oh, I love it. And as Jay alluded to, you don't really think about shooting when it comes to orcs in Age of Sigmar. But where I started swapping out my 200 points blocks of Ard Boys, and they do their job very well, mind you. But I, I started swapping out blocks of my Ard Boys in exchange for Arrow Boys simply for the wound count. Now, Bone Splitters or Iron Jaws, it doesn't matter. There's still two wound chaff models. And don't they also get a bonus against uh, monsters innately? Minus one Ren, baby. That always helps. And there are a lot of monsters running around in the meta. It's true. They're really competitive. Some of them are monster wizards. Some of them are just greater demons. Some of them, they would surprise you that they're monsters... And you're like, huh, I guess that's a monster. Is, is Teclas a monster keyword? Teclas is a monster. Woo! <laughs> Suck it, God of Magic. Yeah, 90 shots to the face of Teclas. Come on, baby.
at minus one rent. So now it's obviously and definitely time to charge after your shooting phase. Best phase. It's a phase. Best phase. And you score more big walk points for every unit that completed a charge. That's so now so you're just dumb. racking up points. Points, 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 points. And this happens in the first turn most of the time. Oh yeah. It's so dumb. <laughs> it's so good. God forbid your opponent lets you lets you set up your entire front lines charge. You should probably take it, assuming you have the defensive capabilities, and if even if you have the plus one hit, you success, successfully buffed your units up to do plus one damage from your war chanters, which you should be running three. It's on, baby. Picking profitable charges isn't as important as it is in Iron Jaws, or even to a lesser degree to Bone Splitters, because they're not daisy chaining attacks when they destroy a unit. You can just kind of throw and see what sticks at the wall. Yeah, to pretty much take advantage of whatever has an opening to you and use the big walk table to guide the flow of your strategy at this point. Because Gore Gruntas, yes, you don't want to hinge on the fact that they produce mortal wounds. Each model actually produces mortal wounds on a charge. You don't want to count on any of this. Because if you, it, not just this army, but any army, if you stick your neck out and separate yourself and say, oh my god, I see a good opening here, you're probably going to get wrecked if you don't have backup. Right. Words to live and die by. Fight phase, my favorite phase, everybody's favorite phase. This is where it gets juicy. By now, in engagement, you should have your entire army, if you're Iron Jaws, uh, or at least your Iron Jaws units, hitting on twos, wounding on twos, army-wide. Ard boys, gore gruntas, brutes, your entire army, hitting on twos, wounding on twos. But what you do have the flexibility now, and you shouldn't, you probably shouldn't, if you're reckless or feeling cute, uh, go ahead and try, but you should not pop the last item, which is the big wog ability on the table, 24 points, 24 points. For one CP, you can give your entire army plus one attacks. However, you are risking everything at this point, which is why I am hard pressed to do it. If I'm in a really bad place, I'll do it on my turn three, but usually it occurs on four or five where I'm trying to really get the game in the bag. I mean, it's also a good win more button. If you're already ahead, you know, win ahead, get farther ahead. If you're not feeling like a big backlash and you need the six up feel no pain or anything like that, um, go ahead and pop it early if you're already there. Right. Because win ahead, get more ahead. Yeah. At that point, the game's already lost for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, finish it off. But if you're not at that point, if you're not on the back foot or way far ahead, I would be a little bit more conservative with that ability. It's like one of those things where it does, if, if you have to roll a two up, you're going to roll a one. So as the table dictates, on a one, if you roll a one after your phase, you lose all of your big walk points. So you lose your plus one to hit, you lose your plus one to wound, you lose your six up fail no pain, you lose your move when you get wounded. Ooh, that's, even for me, as reckless as I can get in gameplay, that's a big risk. But on a two and a five, uh, you lose half, that's okay. On a six, nothing happens. So you be the judge. The battle shock phase, quick and dirty, it doesn't really affect orcs too much. You have a lot of uh, counter counter abilities, the totems and all kinds of crazy crap. Yeah. Their bravery is high. And you should, for the most part, be running MSUs, which is why I personally like to take a block of 30 arrow boy so I can do the inspiring presence. Sure. Yeah. The most fun part is, of course, the list building. And thank you for the last person that commented on them wanting to actually see examples of our actual lists. That was a great idea. I don't know, even know why we didn't think about that. <laughs> you in think, the last you know, one. being professionals of this, we would have done. Right. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Yeah, right. thanks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do that right now. So here's my personal list. And pretty much the entire video has been alluding to the fact of the prophet uh, not running Gordrak. And, th and this is why 460 points, or sorry, for Gordrak, it's 540 points, is too much of a point sink to me. Even running a Maw Crusher at that point, it might as well run Gordrak. What's the point? It's just too much. I'd rather run multiple squads of Gordrantos. You know, it's actually way better than Gordrak. Mm. The Rogue Idol from Forge World. Oh, yeah, Rogue Idol is a great, yeah. a great choice. The big walk and take the Rogue Idol. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also a hell of a lot. And he gets all the benefits, the six up feel no pain, pretty much plugging in all the things that you make can get him to a two up die, save. Yeah. 
you can get him hitting on, I think, two, maybe threes. Yeah. Uh, he's just better than Gortrak. Yeah. Uh, you know, the points for the big wall points, it's just not worth it versus what the rogue idol brings to the table. A little too expensive for me, admittedly, but... That, that's why this game is fun, because you can build in different ways. You need one, though, because I think you'd do a stellar job painting. Oh, possibly. <laughs> so Hopefully good. he wrecks some stuff, too. Sure. Yeah. But this is my list, and this is why I like, I like running the Prophet, because he grants, uh, on a four, as long as he's on the board, at the start of every hero phase, he's giving you, on a 4-up, uh, 1 CP. He's also casting 2, denying 2. And like I said, you can give him the artifact to where he benefits, or sorry, he can uh, potentially benefit from a plus three to cast, uh, also adding to uh, one big wog tally point every single command phase, and the rest of the list should be self-explanatory. I've got the Iron Fist Battalion in there to grant a free made destroyers. I've got the command ability or the, or the Warlord trait to grant a free mighty destroyers. So essentially, yeah. I'm capitalizing everything that Iron Draws are great at. Somewhat of what Bone Splitters are good at. Okay at. Okay at. Uh, because they're really built to kill monsters. And then most importantly, what Big Wog does best for or War Clans. Right. On that note, I appreciate you guys listening to us ramble on about another Destruction Army. We're going to do Undead soon. We should. we got to finish out some Destruction stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Sprinkle in some order. A little luminous. Yeah, we'll move on to death soon. It's a it's a good natural transition. We'll tackle the big two later on. Mm. Order and destruction. Or sorry, or order and chaos. So you guys tell me, am I running my big wall wrong? Because my track record says otherwise. But I'm going to say, don't run a Maw Crusher, don't run Gordrak, unless you're playing for a funsy game. If you want to truly optimize, this is how I suggest you build your big wogs list around. Comments should be juicy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, keep fighting for what you think is right. Keep slaying that meta. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I thought you were doing the wrong burgundy. Until next time. Ah!